and welcome to another episode. Uh, this week I'm off photographing a rather strange looking lighthouse. Um, this rather strange looking lighthouse here uh, down in Somerset. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's a project of mine. Lighthouses are a photographic project I'm undertaking uh, at the moment. So this week I'm going to talk to you about why I think that projects uh, can really help you improve your photography. So in the first half, I'll be uh, down uh, Port's Head photographing the lighthouse and explaining a little bit about projects. Second half, I'm back here and I'm processing the image and we'll take it from here to here and uh, you'll see why I think uh, the finished result is a better image and a better composition uh, than my starting place. A project can be, you know, exactly what you want it to be. So. You know, you could have a, a project of um, photographing ancient monuments in Britain. You could have a project of uh, photographing collections of shells that you've collected on our seashore. You know, it can literally be anything. It can be over any time period. Um, but, you know, it has a central theme. So, you know, my lighthouses, obviously, uh, they're all lighthouses. Um, but, you know, I'll try and work a story into them as as I as I take my images. Using the lighthouse as an example, uh, there's probably over a hundred lighthouses dotted around the UK, um, and you know, I'm never going to get to them all. Um, certainly not in the short term. Um, but I've got uh, quite fascinated by some of the odder looking lighthouses, uh, and as you uh, could see just now. Um, the one at Portishead is certainly a little bit odd. So the first reason that it can improve your photography skills is, is focus. So I've come down here today and you know rather than wandering around photographing just anything I've, I've got a very clear focus for today and it's the building that's uh, behind the camera in front of me uh, and you know, my focus today is going to be on you know what's the best way of, of, of photographing that. So the second reason that projects are good for your photography is because, well, you know, you go to new places. Uh, most projects I'd expect uh, you won't do at home. I mean, I've got nothing against uh, spending time at home, but if you're stuck in a rut, then going out and exploring somewhere new um, is, a, is a great way to reinvigorate your, you know, your love of photography. And, uh, you know, coming here today, I, you know, it's not necessarily... Uh, the most beautiful lighthouse in the world but um, I wouldn't have come here otherwise uh, and I'd never been to Portishead before so you know it's a real sort of you know <laughs> a mini sense of exploration if you like. And the next reason uh, these a project can be transformative uh, to you as a photographer is because it starts to create a body of work and a, a body of work you know will have a central theme through it so I mean, yes, this is, you know, a lighthouse and yes, there'll be lots of other pictures of lighthouses, but um, what's the story that runs through them? Um, am I going to uh, take uh, pictures of lighthouse um, in stormy conditions? Am I going to do them all long exposure? Am I going to do them all black and white? Um, there has to be something that connects um, them together. And, you know, I think that's sort of, it's a sort of mental challenge to understand how you're going to do that, but then also... Um, a real benefit to you uh, once you've once you've done it and you you've got something that's you know more than a, a single photo you know it's a story that tells more than a single photo ever can and by building up that that body of work you you might learn new techniques so if I was going to do these all as long exposures um, you know <laughs> my last lighthouse long exposure you know I'd expect to be considerably better at doing it than when I first started. And I guess for me, you know, I haven't decided yet. Um, I've gone done some of my lighthouses with uh, a long exposure. Um, I've done a couple of them in, in black and white. Um, but I haven't quite found that thread yet that, that links them all together. But, you know, that, that's the continuing challenge that I've got. And I guess the last point I wanted to make uh, about uh, creating, uh, uh, you know, or, or completing a project is that um, if you're searching for a style... Uh, and you've created a body of work, then there's a very good chance that you'll have found your style um, in that creation process. You know, what I'd recommend you do is you'd start taking a look at those photos and you, 
you know you start understanding whether process them in a certain way so you know does your images look best with split toning and you know there's a multitude of different um, things that constitute a, a star in terms of composition and post-processing uh, and but I think you know you'll start to find it as you as you go through those images so um, you know I can show you some of the images I've taken in the past and certainly um, the older uh, images um, there was no real um, grasping for a style there they were just taking images of, of lighthouses but as I've gone on um, the style has sort of started to evolve and um, essentially what I'm looking for is to remove pretty much everything from my images and, and be left with uh, a very clear subject but a very clear subject um, that's got lots of space and that space needs to be empty but still interesting uh, and and that's what I really sort of search for in, in my images as a whole and you know this project has, is, has started to sort of like tease that out of me as a photographer. So we're back uh, at home now and um, I'm going to show you um, the images that I took of the lighthouse and um, I'm not going to take you through all of the steps in, in Lightroom I'm just going to sort of uh, run through some of the key uh, elements um, or, of of the editing process that I did just so you can see really um, the, the you know the difference between the starting point and the ending point and um, just really understand um, the reasons why um, I believe the final image is, is a better um, photo um, than my starting point so um, let's let's start by uh, having a look um, at these I took uh, three bracketed uh, shots so this is the underexposed one um, this is the overexposed one uh, and this is what the camera thinks is the right exposure uh, and that was really to um, work with both the dark foreground and the light sky and, and I was wondering about whether I um, actually um, stacked those those images together but for me this bright area here which is visible in all of the shots is actually uh, too distracting um, so I decided I wouldn't use any of those bracketed images that I took uh, but luckily I took an image earlier uh, in the day um, which is here um, and and the sky um, was much greyer then um, and, and I'm fine with that because you've got um, a lot of texture in the cloud here and I also took another um, shot if I find that one and um, this was a long exposure um, because I quite liked um, taking um, all the ripples out of the water but I'd lost all the structure from the sky uh, and so eventually what I decided to do was merge those two images together so take the uh, water out of this shot and the sky uh, out of um, this shot because this one was a long exposure I had to do quite a bit of work in terms of changing the temperature settings the um, Grad had given out a colour cast to the image. I'll, I'll spare you all of that. Um, I took both of those into Photoshop and so I ended up with this image here and um, so then what you can see is you've got all the lovely texture in the sky um, and you've got um, the very clear um, surface of the water or the very clean surface of the water. Um, I guess one thing I'd always uh, envisaged is that um, this shot would be a black and white shot um, just because you've got such strong um, geometry here and um, the composition I lined up the bridge here with the horizon um, and uh, this strong compositional element here um, and, and you know I just felt that actually the uh, yellow color here and the rust in colours and the red here would be distractions uh, so I'm just going to uh, make this a monochrome image and to do that uh, I'm going to go back into um, Photoshop uh, I'm going to use a third party tool so um, there's a tool in here for um, doing uh, black and white conversions it's a Silver FX Pro uh, 2 and what I'll do is I'll put a link in the notes uh, and so um, it's a paid for uh, piece of software um, but it's really good for doing black and white conversion so let's just launch that okay so essentially what it does is you've got a uh, lots of presets here um, and because 
you know, black and white. I don't spend a lot of time doing uh, work in black and white. What I normally do is start with one of these presets because I quite like them. Uh, and so if I go to this one, full spectrum inverse or full spectrum, I think full spectrum inverse. So um, I quite like that because then you've got um, you've got structure in the sky here. You've got uh, the very clear um, geometry of the of the tower and the light, um, and and then you've you know you've still got lots of texture um, down into the in the rocks. Um, you've lost that uh, colour in here, obviously. Um, that distracts uh, and what I'm just going to do is I've got these sliders up on the right I'm just going to add a bit more structure uh, which is affecting the sky in the main because it's looking for areas of um, difference in contrast and just accentuating that um, so um, yeah I mean that to me now is a pretty a pretty good image and kind of what I had in my head now I've got the image back into Lightroom um, and I guess um, when I look at it, I'm even though uh, this is the composition I, uh, you know, I, I worked for when I was um, on location. I, now I'm sort of I'm struggling a bit with um, the way this falls away here uh, and almost uh, leaves the image unbalanced. So um, what I'm tempted to do is change the crop and actually look at it as a a one by one crop and if I move this over here okay so yeah if I adjust it as a slightly okay so then what I think we've done is we've we've lost that troublesome area um, down here uh, and we've made it obvious now what the focus of the image is uh, and I guess in the style you know that I prefer, I've kind of put my subject uh, into um, a background that contains very little, but actually is still quite interesting. So as a final thing, then let's compare those two images. And so this is where I started, um, and you know you've, you've got not a lot of detail in here, um, not a lot of texture in the sky, um, and you know I don't think it's obvious really that this is the you know our focus um, this is the edited image then obviously uh, we've got you know a ton of structure now in here um, we've you know very clearly put this uh, object in focus um, but we've still got you know interest in the sky behind it um, so yeah I'm as I say very happy with with how those have turned out so if you've enjoyed this video and you're now um, keen to go out and start your own projects then perhaps put a comment um, below tell me um, what you're thinking in terms of projects uh, if you've liked please like uh, please subscribe and I'll see you uh, next time next week on another video